On today's show, Tesla tops Consumer Reports customer satisfaction survey for a second year running, Richard Branson becomes chairman of Hyperloop One, and Elon Musk accidentally tweets his personal phone number for all to see. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, it's the last show of the year and quite a bumper one at that. So let's get going with the news that the Tesla Model S has yet again topped the Consumer Reports Customer Satisfaction Survey in the US, placing ahead of the Porsche 911 and the Chevrolet Corvette. The survey, different from the Consumer Reports Reliability Survey, plots overall customer satisfaction on a per model and per brand basis and gives top marks to the Model S. Although the Model X crossover SUV placed eighth overall, partly due to issues with those massive Falcon wing doors, it yet again reiterates that Tesla customers are, for the most part, happy with their Tesla ownership experience, even if their cars have average or below average, depending on the model, reliability. In other words, even if the cars need attention, Tesla customers are happy overall with how Tesla handles those service issues. As you probably know, Toyota has been a little slow when it comes to electric cars, preferring instead over the years to focus on hybrid and then hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. This week, however, Toyota announced it would bring 10 all-electric global vehicle models to market by 2020, with every Toyota model by 2025 offered as both an all-electric and an electrified, so hybrid, plug-in hybrid or fuel cell model by 2025. By 2030, Toyota says it hopes to have 5 million electrified vehicles worldwide, with 1 million of those split between battery electric and hydrogen fuel cell electric. Officially, we've yet to hear pricing for the upcoming Jaguar I-PACE electric SUV, but this week, reservation holders in the Netherlands, one of the I-PACE's key launch markets, were given equivalent pricing by their dealers ranging from $76,400 for the entry-level I-PACE S through to $98,773 for the range-topping I-PACE first edition. All models will come with 90 kilowatt hours of battery pack as standard and 50 kilowatt DC quick charge. The entry level is still well equipped with LED headlights, 18-inch wheels and Meridian audio system, while the high-end model adds up heads-up display, air suspension and sunroof, as well as adjustable seats, surround sound and adaptive cruise control, to name just a few things. I haven't got the chance to see the iPace myself, but I can't wait to see how it compares to the Tesla Model X in the real world. Chinese-backed startup Faraday Future isn't doing so well with raising bills and very little hope for the future. Yet it seems out of the ashes of the wannabe Tesla killer, there's a new electric car startup. Called eVelocity, the new startup hasn't an online presence yet, except a very simple website. But a fair few number of former Faraday Future employees are said to have moved there. Of course, there's no expectation that the company will do any better than the one which came before, but it's an interesting development, at least. Solid-state batteries, where the electrolyte is solid rather than a liquid or a gel, have long been considered something of a holy grail for electric cars, thanks to their increased energy density, power density, and longer life. Consequentially, we've seen lots of research and development into solid-state batteries from many mainstream automakers, including Toyota, a Volkswagen, and Ford. Well, this week, we heard a rumour that Honda and Nissan could be added to the list, courtesy of a partnership that would see the two companies work on solid-state battery tech. While Honda confirmed that it is indeed working on solid-state batteries, the rumour wasn't confirmed by Nissan. With both Toyota and Honda now working on solid-state battery technology and Nissan keen to remain a key player in the electric car world, I think it's likely that it's studying at least some form of solid-state battery tech. Don't you? Next up, it's time for a quick reminder about Ecotricity's Eco Wholesale Energy product that could be saving you up to $400 on a year on your home bill or up to $4,000 a year on your business electricity bill. It works by linking you directly to 100% renewable wholesale prices after paying a small admin fee, and it's the most affordable carbon zero certified electricity that Kiwis can buy. So make sure you sign up and start saving those pennies today by following the link below. 
Virgin Hyperloop One, one of two companies trying to bring Hyperloop technology to reality, has announced Richard Branson, he of the Virgin Empire, is now the official non-executive company chairman following Virgin's official acquisition of Hyperloop One. At the same time, it's also announced an additional $50 million in investment ahead of its Series C round of funding. But perhaps the most exciting piece of news is that Virgin Hyperloop One has reached a new maximum test speed of 387 kilometers per hour. That's 240 miles per hour. That's still a way away from the speeds promised us to by Elon Musk in his Hyperloop Alpha White paper. But as they say, progress is most certainly progress. I grew up on a farm and as such, I've always had a soft spot for the iconic Land Rover. I'm not talking about the poncy Chelsea tractors that go around urban neighbourhoods and never see a spot of dirt. No, I'm talking about the good old-fashioned Defender, a direct descendant of the original Series 1 Land Rover. The original Defender ended production early last year, despite Jaguar Land Rover producing a really awesome off-road electric prototype that really could go anywhere. But when the next generation Defender enters production, Land Rover has confirmed it will come with an all-electric variant. Sure, it won't keep fans of the original Defender happy stylistically, but hey, if it goes off-road and it's all-electric, I'm all in. Last autumn, BMW celebrated selling its 100,000th plug-in vehicle. A few months back, BMW celebrated building its 100,000th i3. This week, it celebrated building its 100,000th BMW with a plug in just one year, showcasing how quickly the company is accelerating its push towards electric cars. To celebrate the milestone, it turned its famous four-cylinder headquarters building into a giant battery, complete with the slogan, the future is electric. Yes, yes, it most certainly is. If you have the kind of hobbies that require you to carry large items or you happen to have dogs, you'll know how useful estate cars or station wagons are. Yet sadly, there really aren't that many options for plug-in car owners who want a useful practical estate. Which is exactly why coach building firm Quest from my home county of Norfolk, England, have been busy working on turning a standard Model S into a station wagon. And now it's complete. You may have seen some of the coverage on Fully Charged in recent weeks, and if you haven't, make sure you go and watch the special. I'll link below for you to catch up. They've promised me a ride the next time I'm back in the UK, so I can't wait to get a go. Oh, and do you keep a trash and bore? And finally, we've all done it. Sent an email to the wrong person, butt dialed someone we didn't want to speak to, and accidentally leaked some personal information on social media. Well, it turns out that so too has Elon Musk after he accidentally sent a public message rather than a direct message to the CTO of Oculus with his phone number included. It didn't take long for fans to jump on the chance to call Elon, but he was pretty far ahead of them. Call the number now and this is what you get. By the gods, you've done it. Somehow you found your way here to me. Clever move, Elon. Clever move. And on that note, it's time for me to bring another episode, the final episode of the year, to a close. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. As always, I'll be back soon with more Ecotech goodness. So make sure you hit that notification bell to find out the minute a new show is uploaded. Have a very Merry Christmas. Make sure you do something fun. And don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. As always, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.